Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to go through the plasma membrane structure. If you are new here then click subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest year 12 videos, year 13 videos are going to be released. So plasma membranes, first thing to point out is when this is stated on the specification, it doesn't just mean cell membranes, it also means the membranes surrounding organelles. So the organelles which have membranes, such as the mitochondria. And the plasma membrane structure is the same, whether it's on the surface of a cell or the outside of an organelle. So the membranes are often described as a fluid mosaic model. And this is due to the mixture of different components. That is the mosaic part. The fluid part refers to the movement of those molecules. So they are not fixed rigid. They can actually slightly move up and down, side to side, so they are fluid. And the different components that make this mosaic are the phospholipids, proteins, glycoproteins, glycolipids, and there's also cholesterol. And all of those are what we're gonna cover in this video. All of those molecules um, are embedded either on the outside or through this phospholipid bilayer. And this is what creates what's known as the partially permeable membrane. So the different properties of the phospholipids de determines which molecules can simply diffuse through the membrane. So first of all, the key component is the phospholipid bilayer. And that's what we can see here. What we mean by bilayer, by meaning two, we have two layers of phospholipids. The way that they arrange themselves is the hydrophilic heads are facing the outside. The hydrophobic tails face the inside of the bilayer. And this is because of the different properties of the head versus the tail of a phospholipid. So if we just look over here at a phospholipid, it shows in a bit more detail the different parts, what the components are. So the head contains a phosphate group, which does have a negative charge on it. And it also contains the glycerol molecule. So that head, because it has a negative charge, that makes it hydrophilic. And what that means is it will attract or it is attracted to water. Now the tails, which are these bits down here, those are the fatty acid chains. And the fatty acid chains are hydrophobic. And what that means is because they do not have any charges, they will repel water, um, but they will actually attract other lipids. Now, the reason we've got a three and a four here as two separate labels for the fatty acids is um, this one here is representing a saturated fatty acid. Number four is representing an unsaturated fatty acid because there is a double bond between two carbon atoms. So that is the phospholipid bilayer. Um, it forms that layer because of the different properties of the head versus the tail. Next, then, if we look at the cholesterol embedded within the membrane, so we can see here in yellow, one molecule of cholesterol, we've got a few more spaced through, embedded within the phospholipid bilayer. So the cholesterol, the purpose of this is, it can restrict the lateral, so the sideways movement of the molecules. So the more cholesterol within the membrane, the less fluid it is, or it's more rigid. Now this is useful to have a certain amount of cholesterol because that will mean it will be less fluid at high temperatures. And that is important because if your membranes became too fluid when you became hot, what would happen is the gaps between the phospholipids would become too large and water and dissolved ions could leak in or out of the cell. And that could either cause dehydration or it could cause cells to burst. So that is the important role of cholesterol. The next is the proteins, and proteins can be embedded across the cell surface membrane, or this could be organelle membrane as well, um, either peripheral. Now, what this means is it doesn't go through the entire width. So, for example, here, this is a peripheral membrane protein because it doesn't span the whole width of the membrane. It's just on one side. 
integral, those are the ones that do span the entire um, width, so it goes from one side to the other. So we can see here, this is an integral protein. So peripheral proteins, their function is mechanical support. Or they might be there to connect proteins to um, a lipid or a carbohydrate. So it makes these glycolipids um, or glycoproteins. And those normally act as receptors. So we can see here a glycoprotein, meaning we have a carbohydrate attached to a protein. Glycolipid, now that actually isn't involved in the proteins because glycolipid does mean it is a lipid directly attached, um, sorry, it's a carbohydrate directly attached to the phospholipid. But the function of both of those is for cell recognition, um, such as receptors. The integral proteins are protein carriers or channel proteins. So this would be a channel protein because it's got a pore or a channel running the whole way through. Um, there's not a diagram of a channel protein on this particular image, but we'll see that later on. But both of those types of proteins are involved in transporting molecules from one side of the membrane all the way across the other. So protein channels, just a bit more detail about those because you do need to know more than just it is a hollow tube. So the protein channel tube can fill with water and that then enables water soluble ions, so for example sodium ions, to dissolve and then diffuse through that channel. In contrast, the carrier proteins, those are the ones where you'll have the binding of larger molecules, such as glucose or amino acids. They'll bind to that carrier molecule. It causes that carrier molecule or carrier protein to change shape, and therefore it transports it to the other side. So those are the proteins and the functions of the proteins within the cell membrane. So the final thing to point out then is what we mean by the partially permeable membrane. And this is referring to only certain molecules can diffuse through by simple diffusion across the phospholipid bilayer. So because that phospholipid bilayer um, has the properties that were discussed on the first slide, that means only lipid soluble molecules can simply diffuse through. So some hormones, for example, estrogen. Or if it's a very, very small molecule, for example, the gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide or water, they are all small enough to be able to diffuse through tiny gaps. So the molecules that can't pass through by simple diffusion would be water soluble substances, which are larger than water molecules. Um, those are also known as polar substances. And that would be substances, for example, sodium ions. Or if the molecule is too large, for example, glucose, glucose is not able to pass through by simple diffusion because it's too big. So that is it for the phospholipid bilayer structure and function. Hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.